Um, yeah, thank you for the welcome, um, Matt, and thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we are going to be looking at an end user threat model for Envoy Gateway. Uh, my name is Tuan Vandenbroek, uh, Cloud Native Security Engineer at Control Plane, and this is my esteemed colleague, James Callahan, um, also from Control Plane. Um, so, a little bit about us before we get started. Um, Control Plane is a cloud native security consultancy um, that specializes in cloud, Kubernetes, and containers. Um, our clients include uh, government actors as well as financial services and highly regulated industries. Uh, we have just over 50 people um, across the UK, Northern Europe, and Australasia, and expanding. Um, and to get us started here, we're going to go over a little bit of an overview of what we're going to do, um, what this work is, as well as um, how, what our current state is. Um, so what is our, our uh, scope here? Uh, we are commissioned by the Linux Foundation to do this piece of work, um, but we would like to say that it is not a security review or an audit of the project itself. Um, it is a threat model based on end user implementation and security considerations revolving around the actual use case of Envoy Gateway itself. Um, and a huge thank you, or thank you to Arco um, and the team at Tetrate with Matt and Zach as well for their ongoing collaboration and feedback throughout this process. Um, so through our presentation, we will give a quick introduction to what threat modeling is, why it's important, and why it's helpful. Um, and then we're going to go through three specific demos, um, attempting to kind of show uh, realization of some of the attacks that we've enumerated in our attack trees. Um, and some next steps forward from this presentation, we look to finalize the threat model report um, and uh, specifically update and refresh based on the recent 0.6 release uh, a few days ago. So what is threat modeling? Um, threat modeling is an um, interactive exercise that uh, tries to bring everyone to the table, not just security folks, um, at identifying and enumerating threats and vulnerabilities. Um, it looks at devising mitigations and security controls to reduce residual risks, um, as well as escalate the most important risks that you've found pertinent to your system. Um, so you might ask, why threat model? Um, and a lot of the value here is actually identifying security flaws and risks early um, in your system design process, so thereby saving time on consuming redesigns of your system um, that otherwise would have had to happen if you did not consider the security risk to begin with. Um, and it helps you to focus and fine tune your security requirements to actualize risks that are mapped to attack trees um, and identify complex risks and data flows. Um, and kind of like what I mentioned, everyone can and should threat model, not just security teams. Um, so into the process that we follow. Uh, we follow a four-step iterative process um, for threat modeling that starts out first with what are we building. Um, so here you need to actually define your scope, understand what your system is, um, your data, your adversaries, and your architecture to be able to actually begin the threat modeling process. Here you will build data flow diagrams as well as system architecture diagrams to actually understand what it is you're working with and how you can begin to uh, build a threat modeling exercise off of that. Uh, moving into step two, we look to catastrophize um, your system, right? So what can go wrong? Uh, typically, we'll use open source threat intelligence uh, sources, as well as brainstorming and techniques like Stride um, to enumerate threats, uh, and then building attack trees to understand um, complex threat vectors based off of that and how the two map between themselves. Um, in step three, you get actually some of the, the solutions here, right? So we will begin to build a risk management strategy based on your use case and your system architecture. Uh, we will devise controls to help mitigate your threats um, and then implement controls based on that risk management strategy that we had kind of set out at the beginning. Um, and fourth, and arguably one of the most important steps, is that iterative process here. Um, so did we actually do a good job in our threat modeling exercise? Um, so here we will map controls to the attack trees that we've elucidated. Um, and then in many cases, you'll build automated tests um, to test the control implementation and sometimes as well offsec and pen test exercises um, to further enforce what you have provided as far as attack trees and the controls that you use to break those attack chains. Um, and it is uh, highly encouraged to revisit your threat model regularly to keep it relevant. Um, so to start us out and before we kind of dive into Envoy Gateway itself, we kind of need to understand um, what is Gateway API. And this will come into play later in the presentation as well as we actually begin to categorize uh, some of our risks. Uh, but Gateway API, as, as some of you may know, um, is an open source project maintained by SIG Network. Um, it is intended to be expressive and the next generation and iteration of the Kubernetes Ingress API. Um, 
So we have here a, a very high-level overview, an architecture diagram that you can find um, on the Gateway API docs. Um, but at its base level, Gateway API is composed of three resources, of Gateway classes, um, which act as a decoupling between the actual mechanism, or in our case, controller, um, and the gateway implementation itself, um, and provide a class of gateways, almost a, a templatized configuration for your load balancing resources. Um, gateway is the actual load, ba or, sorry, load balancing resource itself and that ingress mechanism. Um, and the routes are what actually brings uh, and routes your traffic uh, through to your services in different namespaces on your clusters. Um, it is intended to be role-orientated API, and its security model is based on three primary personas. Um, there is also a, a four-tier model that includes application admins that we'll kind of get into in the next slides. Um, but at a high level, it's looking at your infrastructure provider, um, which will manage uh, the most, uh, the highest level of resources and have the highest level of permissions with gateway classes, gateways, and routes, um, and then your cluster operator, uh, which sometimes may uh, configure and have access to work with your gateway class, um, but in most cases, will be working with your gateway resource and your routes. Um, and at the lowest level, your app dev, um, which should primarily be concerned with the actual routes that provide service um, to the applications that they manage and develop. Um, so now we kind of understand a little bit about what Gateway API is. Um, so what are we building here? Uh, we will, are, in this threat modeling exercise, we build a demo deployment of Envoy Gateway with a few different deployment topologies that James will get into a little later. Um, but at its base level, Envoy Gateway implements Gateway API, um, where Gateway classes are cluster scoped resources that are intended to be managed by the infrastructure provider itself. And each Envoy Gateway controller um, will accept a single Gateway class resource. Um, gateways are intended to be namesake scoped, and they implement the gateway class itself, as I kind of mentioned, as a templatized uh, configuration. Um, and routes are bound to a parent gateway, and then provide downstream traffic to the services in different application namespaces for developers. Um, so Envoy Gateway operates on static and dynamic configuration. Um, and the static configuration um, is used to configure Envoy Gateway to startup and should be stored in a secure source control management repository. And dynamic config is used to um, reconcile the desired state and to provide um, dynamic updates of the state of the data plane via Kubernetes resources, typically through applying manifest or some sort of GitOps deployment. Um, so some of the threat actors in, that are considered in the security model for Gateway API, um, this is the four-tier security model that operates on a multi-tenant context. Um, first, on the infrastructure provider who have uh, access to your Gateway class, your Gateway, and your route. Um, the cluster oper or operators, as I mentioned a little bit before, sometimes have access to your Gateway class, but in most cases will be working with your Gateway and route resources. Um, for your application admins, um, they will not be working with your Gateway class. Um, in specified namespaces that they are administered to manage, uh, they will work uh, with your gateway itself and then the routes. Um, and at the lowest level, um, at the application developers, they should only be uh, working with and concerned with the actual routes that provide service to their applications. Um, so I'm going to hand this over to James. Thank you very much, Torin. Um, so as Torin has said, we are going to look at a multi-tenant uh, deployment model because in threat modeling, we want to el elucidate the most threats. So we want to make it more likely that something can go wrong. We can obviously do this more easily in a multi-tenant where, setting where we have a new threat actor, which is the, the co-tenant. Um, so what we're going to do, and this is all spun up, uh, this infrastructure is spun up if you go to that um, repo that we mentioned at the start of the talk, uh, Threat Modeling Envoy Gateway Talk in the Control Plane Organization. What we're going to do is spin this all up on a kind cluster and look at a few different deployment te uh, topologies for Envoy Gateway. We're not suggesting at this point that one is better than the other. Um, we're going to find that out um, through threat modeling and catastrophizing, as Torin said first. So, on the left-hand side here, we have a single tenant um, called Tenant A, very imaginative, I know, um, and Tenant A has their own dedicated gateway class. They have their own Envoy Gateway controller in a namespace which they own, Tenant A namespace. Again, um, our, our naming is just so imaginative. Um, and this Envoy Gateway controller provisions a dedicated Envoy proxy for Tenant A. And they also create their roots in this namespace, and their backends are also in this namespace. So a very, very simple single namespace model. 
we see there is um, traffic coming out of that tenant A namespace to tenant D namespace. Um, we'll get to how that is actually done uh, through resources later on. Um, and this doesn't, tenant D doesn't have to be um, a, a tenant in the strictest sense of the word. It could just be another namespace which uh, tenant A has some control over. But again, we want to look at the worst case scenario. So we'll consider the case where we have a, 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 a route to a, another tenant. On the right-hand side, we have a shared gateway approach where we have a shared gateway class. Again, this is a cluster scoped resource. Um, we have a shared Envoy Gateway controller in a dedicated namespace provisioning an Envoy proxy for shared tenants in that dedicated shared namespace. We then have tenants B and C sitting underneath um, uh, and, and their traffic is all using this uh, shared Envoy proxy. Let's have a look then at how we get these cross namespace routes. Um, so there's two ways. The first one is the shared model that we talked about before. So in this shared model, we need a gateway listener. This is the shared gateway listener, as you can see from the, uh, from the namespace. Um, and this shared um, gateway has a listener which um, has a allowed route. And in the allowed route, we match on namespaces. So we say um, in tenant B and tenant C namespaces, we can create um, HTTP routes which bind to this, uh, this gateway. So then we have an example on the right-hand side of such a route. We're looking at tenant B here, and we can see we're just routing um, tenantb.example.com uh, um, to a backend run in tenant B's namespace. So that's one model. Um, the other, mo other model is using reference grants. Um, in this case, this is related to this, uh, the left-hand side of that diagram before. Uh, we have a tenant A gateway in this case. We have a tenant A route, but that route references um, a tenant D backend and then tenant D need to create a reference grant in their namespace in order for this to work. Otherwise, um, the traffic will not get routed there. Um, so what we're seeing is a model where in both cases, um, Envoy Gateway has this built in. It's a handshake mechanism where to get cross namespace traffic, you need some resource to be created in each namespace. So we have inbuilt protection against malicious cross namespace routes uh, built in to, Envoy, uh, to, to Gateway API and by extension, any implementation. However, that doesn't mean that we stop threat modeling here. We still want to understand what would an attacker have to do to create a malicious HTTP route, and why would they want to do this in the first place? So let's consider a scenario where we have a malicious tenancy. Remember, that, remember they were sitting underneath the shared gateway. Um, if tenancy were malicious, they could perhaps think of a scenario where they want to direct legitimate users of a tenant B service um, to something that looks like a tenant B service, but actually it's served up by tenant C. If they can do this, they could uh, maybe try and steal credentials, try and um, yeah, get someone to log into a, um, a cloned page, something like that. So let's look at what this would look like. Um, first of all, we spin up the infra in the diagram, and we set up port forwarding to our tenant A gateway so that we can hit tenant A resources on localhost um, 8888. And then we'll just curl our tenant A example and it's just an echo server, and you can see at the bottom, it's being served up from the tenant A namespace. So let's do this again now for our shared gateway. We'll set up port forwarding so we can hit uh, localhost 8889, and we'll just take the example of tenant B. So we'll curl tenantb.example.com, and again, we will see that it's served up as expected from tenant B's namespace. However, what happens if tenant C can create this malicious HTTP route? Um, so we can see it's created in the tenant C namespace, um, but it's referring to tenantb.example.com slash totally legit. Um, what happens if I can then socially engineer a tenant B user to go to this um, URL? Let's look at this in action then. Um, we are going to apply our um, uh, malicious HTTP route, and then we're going to curl um, tenantb.example.com slash totally legit. And you will see we have been foiled. It's served up by tenant C. So this is one example uh, of how social engineering could be coupled with uh, a malicious cross namespace route. Um, and we can codify this, as Torin said before, in an attack tree. So we're going to do that now. Let's ignore the left-hand side of this slide for now and just focus on this attack tree. And let's just look at the top two lines. So we want to route traffic to a malicious endpoint. This is a blue node, which in our code means it's an and. It needs all of the nodes below it to be realized for it to be realizable. 
Um, so we need to be able to create the malicious HTTP route, which we did in the previous step, and also we need that social engineering element. Taking a break from the attack tree just for a moment to come back to the left, what we'll see is that there are different types of threats as we go on. Um, we'll have some threats, such as all of the ones in this tree, which are completely generic to Gateway API. Um, we'll also have some which are completely generic to container security because we're running on Kubernetes. Um, there'll be some which will be Envoy Gateway implementation specific, and this is where the importance of iterative threat modeling comes in, because what we do is we want to have those conversations with Arco and the maintainers. Um, they iterate the product, so um, all of these demos are based on version 0.5 of Envoy Gateway, so we need to update them and update the threat modeling report post 0.6, and what we'll see actually is that some Envoy Gateway specific things have actually improved in point six, which is massive credit to, to Arco and the team. Um, back to the right-hand side then, and looking underneath uh, the malicious HTTP route, um, we saw before there's two ways to do this and, and get this cross namespace route. The, the left-hand side underneath um, the green node, which is an OR, um, is uh, the single tenant example where we had the reference grant created. We won't spend too much time on that because as you can see at the bottom, you basically need, because of this handshake mechanism, you need a malicious developer, malicious admin, or compromised credentials to do something bad here. The more interesting case is to the right where we have the shared gateway uh, because now all we need is that the shared gateway supports a malicious namespace. Um, again, we could have a malicious admin, which isn't a very exciting attack. Um, Another way we could do this, though, is instead of matching on namespaces as we had before, we could match on a custom label, such as M for something. Um, and in this case, any malicious actor who can successfully label namespaces could potentially add a namespace to that list of uh, supported um, namespaces. So we've derived a control here, and this is how threat modeling works. We, we, we do an attack tree, we derive a control, and we try and cut off one of the branches. So here, we just are very strict about configuring root bindings based on namespace name rather than any other custom label. The namespace name is always gonna be there, and it's gonna be safe. So again, this comes back to this handshake mechanism protecting us from, from these risks being realized. Let's look at a more nefarious attack here. So our attacker, if they really wanna um, compromise one of our um, shared tenants or the single tenant, compromising an Envoy proxy itself would be the end goal because we can tamper with traffic, we can sniff traffic, we can compromise the availability of traffic delivered to backends. Um, this is the ultimate goal. So let's just have a look, um, not a very exciting look, but just a, a very simple example of something we could do with a malicious Envoy gateway, um, Envoy proxy image deployed by gateway, and we'll look at how this is done by modifying um, a gateway class and an a custom Envoy proxy resource. So first of all, let's just look at a really silly toy container. All we do is on top of Envoy Gateway um, base image, we install TCP dump and a script which just listens for incoming uh, HTTP connections. Uh, not very exciting. Um, so we'll build this first of all, and then we will load it into our uh, Kine cluster so that we can use it in our manifests. And once we have done this, which will take a minute, we can then um, set up a new tenant if there weren't uh, enough with a to D already, we're gonna install tenant E and give them their own Envoy Gateway controller and their own namespace. We're just doing this for example purposes to show how you can create a custom gateway class and a custom Envoy proxy. Then we look at some of the infra we'll deploy for tenant E. So we will give them at the top their own gateway class uh, and we're going to reference out to a custom Envoy proxy config which is at the bottom, and this proxy config uses our custom um, malicious toy silly uh, image. Uh, so let's, do, uh, let's apply this now and see uh, what an attacker could see. We all know what the answer is gonna be, it's just uh, all the incoming HTTP traffic, but let's show it. Uh, so we'll exec into the Envoy proxy um, pod deployed for uh, tenant uh, E and run our TCP dump script. Uh, we'll see probably some uh, random uh, health check traffic and stuff. And you've got to imagine me like furiously opening another uh, window, trying to curl tenant E in the background. Eventually it'll come through, but I, I was obviously quite slow at the time. Um, and there it is. There is our um, echo um, response from, from tenant E's namespace. So obviously, very silly example. In a real life scenario, um, an attacker is much more likely to want to uh, tamper with traffic. Um, or farm off traffic to an attacker control service without being noticed. Um, but again, just a silly example to show that compromising the Envoy proxy is a good end goal for an attacker. So how would we do this? It's back to the attack trees. 
Um, so our second attack tree has this as our top node, compromising an Envoy proxy. It's a green or node, because there's many ways to do this. Um, we could maliciously craft an image. Um, we could do this through a supply chain attack, either in uh, Envoy Gateway or um, Envoy proxy projects um, themselves, or we could do a dependency confusion attack or type of squatting, something like that, um, to trick uh, someone into installing a malicious uh, image. Um, the risk that we, the, the one that we looked at before on the previous slide, this was this second node here. So gateway class references malicious image. We'll come back to that um, in the next slide because we're not done with this tree just yet. Um, remote, con uh, remote code execution within the proxy is obviously um, a possibility if we have a suitable vulnerability and network access. Uh, gaining a, a shell in a, a running proxy container is obviously possible if the attacker has Kubernetes API access and um, the, the container has a shell. And of course, we're, we're running on Kubernetes, so we have um, generic pivoting risks as well if there's some weak Kubernetes configuration in, in play. We'll do the same thing again. So this one we'll leave to the next slide, but we'll look at some example controls for these other ones. So supply chain attack, the Envoy Gateway project can help us here by doing things like aligning with, uh, with Salsa standards, uh, signing images so that uh, people can verify that they're running trusted images, and production of uh, SBOM and VEX can help with vulnerability triage processes. Vulnerability Envoy proxy images themselves. Um, we, of course, don't have to use that customized Envoy proxy resource for, uh, for evil. We can do it for good. Uh, so we can pin um, versions to minor patch releases, uh, again, to help that triage process uh, and, and to make sure that we're mitigating any identified vulnerabilities. Proxy containers having a shell. Um, obviously, uh, we can use distroless base images. Worth saying, again, um, the demo was based on version 0.5. 0.6 uh, uses uh, distroless base images. Again, it's that iterative process of um, talking with uh, uh, developers, a change being made. Our, our end goal really here is to have all of the threats just um, either um, remediated um, by default or a very, very simple end user implementation. So the less threats that we get uh, over time as the project evolves, the better. Um, we're still going to capture those in the, in the report. It's just the recommendation will change from being something like you have to do this very specific thing to, well, just run Envoy Gateway 0.6 or higher. And finally, weak Kubernetes security. We, uh, we're, at, um, uh, we're all here um, for, um, for a reason. We, we know a bit about this, so validating of mission control, app armor, set comp, um, limiting Linux capabilities, things like that. Um, we can also consider maybe a hardened runtime for proxy and gateway pods. Um, so something like Gvisor, this could uh, help with this pivoting risk. So back to our interesting example then, which is this uh, one um, circled in yellow. So gateway class references malicious image. The example we saw on the previous, um, previous demo wasn't very exciting, because again, we just created the resources. Um, it would be much more interesting to, to see what sort of access would we have to have, what would have to be compromised in our cluster in order to tamper with those resources. So let's look at the example of a malicious gateway class being created. And for this example, we're going to imagine in our diagram from the start that tenant A has been compromised. And more specifically, their Envoy Gateway controller has been compromised. What could they do, uh, what could the attacker do if they've compromised the tenant A, A namespace and that gateway controller? So it's uh, the third and last demo of the day. Let's have a look. Version 0.5 uses a cluster role for, uh, for Envoy Gateway. So let's see what that cluster role can do to Envoy proxies. Note we can't patch Envoy proxies. So that's going to just patching the, the proxy image used by the shared gateway, for example, to get a malicious gateway for the shared tenants. That's not going to work. However, let's look what we can do with gateway classes. And we will see that we can patch gateway classes. So let's see if we can create something like this. So we've got a malicious Envoy proxy. It's not a stretch to imagine. We've said tenant A has been compromised. Maybe we have a malicious custom proxy config in the tenant A namespace. Now, can we patch the gateway class to use this shared config? So what we really want to do is create this uh, malicious gateway class from our compromised controller in tenant A, but we're actually patching the gateway class for tenant um, tenant C or B or someone who uses the, the shared gateway. So what we'll do is we'll just apply our, um, our malicious Envoy proxy uh, resource because we're saying tenant A has been compromised. That's in the tenant A namespace. And now we've got this little script in our, um, in our repo which will uh, perform an action, a kube control action, as the tenant A um, uh, 
compromised Envoy Gateway Controller. Uh, so what we'll do is patch that Envoy, uh, that Gateway class resource, restart our pods um, in the shared namespace, and then what we'll do is just show that the, uh, the pods have been restarted recently. And now let's grep out the image used by our shared Envoy, Envoy proxy. And we can see that it is not our TCP dump image, so it hasn't worked. Again, this is a uh, mitigation built into Gateway API, which I'll come back to in just one second. But in 0.5, we still do have to, um, uh, we've got a gateway class, which um, that was very quick at the end, apologies for that. Um, basically, you could enumerate secrets in different namespaces. So just having the gateway class, which is permissive, um, is something which was, a, I think, the right um, move to, to go uh, to a different model in, in 0.6, which we'll see has been done later on. Um, just going back to that, uh, that um, thing about the, uh, why didn't that work? Uh, so we patched the gateway class. Um, the reason this doesn't work is that in gateway API, if you, um, uh, the state of a gateway is bound to the state of the gateway class at startup time. And what this does is it just reduces blast radius. So again, we can't patch um, a gateway class and have it affect all of the running gateways underneath that gateway class. We would have to actually create new gateways and that would be complicated because you'd have to get trick people into using those gateways for their routes and stuff like that. So this massively reduces blast radius and is another example of, of, of gateway API and any implementation which does it well, such as um, Envoy Gateway helping us out here. So this helps our threat model massively. We brought up a threat here, which was the uh, cluster role. And maintaining awareness of cluster roles is ob obviously um, key. Um, note, um, I, I realize we're um, almost over time, aren't we? But uh, we'll finish up quite quickly. Gateway classes will always be cluster scoped. But um, like I said before, Arco and the team um, really, really have been really engaging during this process. And 0.6 does not require these cluster roles. So already, we're getting built-in mitigations against some of our threats. Business context has to be added. Um, normally, you would do this when you uh, do um, a data dictionary. This depends on the data held by your client. It's a bit hard to do this, and hence to prioritize threats in a very generic case where anyone could be using this project. Um, so what we've done is a very generic uh, kind of like impact likelihood thing, just to prioritize threats. We've got some other um, examples that we can go through. I don't think there's much value going through specific examples right now because we'll push the reports and you can read through these in detail. But things just like uh, good PKI um, uh, key management, uh, there are really good docs on the uh, Envoy Gateway uh, documentation site uh, regarding use of Cert Manager and um, uh, stuff like that. Um, the threat at the bottom, misconfiguration of dynamic proxy com dynamic config. This is really what we've been talking about with those attack trees throughout the whole talk. Um, and what we, have, um, what we have to do is basically just adopt those RBAC models shown by Torin at the start, either the three or four tier, whichever is more uh, relevant to you. Maybe consider a GitOps uh, model for dynamic config. Um, and a secure baseline, instead of using like this shared, um, uh, shared model, maybe single gateway class per cluster, Envoy gateway controller per tenant, tenants with similar data sensitivity, stuff like that. Soft multi-tenancy assumptions, I think, is um, a safe thing. And uh, Matt is looking at his watch. So please um, check out Envoy Gateway 0.6. Um, stay tuned for the threat model report, which we'll push to the, to the repo. Currently in draft, we're updating. And once it gets pushed, we really, really would appreciate comments and uh, feedback and, and collaboration. So thank you very much.